So that's where that stopped. And you used that by tuning the frequency to, that would resonate those cells? No, I didn't go that way. Instead, all I did was use uh, millimeter waves because they're limited just to the surface of the skin and they could concentrate their thermal effects in the tumor. And then I used an infrared thermometer, a remote viewing thermometer, to adjust the amplitude of my millimeter radiation. So I didn't I go over about uh, 47 degrees C. And this allowed the cell to start a process of self-dissolution or self-destruction called apoptosis. And in this uh, mode of operation, the cell actually disassembles itself and throws its contents into the bloodstream. And of course, the immune system took over from there. So you're, uh, I guess you just said you're heating the cell up with a, with a millimeter, millimeter wave radiation, and then it's just dying from the overheating exposure. Uh, heat, essentially. Uh, using all with mirror radiation because it was very easily concentrated in the melanoma. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's what I have. There's more questions, I think. I, I want to go back to something you said about entangled particles. Yes. Uh, now that's a fascinating topic. Are you saying the proposed invention that you have to create a pair of entangled particles? Uh, this is strictly conjecture. I have proof, but. Uh, Entanglement might account for uh, the effects that uh, Nikolai Tesla reported in uh, Colorado Springs when the uh, radiation from his exploding wire passed through a glass plate, a thick glass plate, and yet still gave stinging feelings, which could have been uh, any neutrino, neutrino annihilation, it could have been anything else, but that's just a guess. Very low energy. It's perhaps enough to simulate particular nerves, but that's about it. It produced no damage to Tesla. He lived to be a ripe old age. Did anyone else feel the same thing he did, or, or was he the only one that felt it? Well, uh, his uh, experimental cohorts, the uh, folks that he hired to work on the uh, project, experienced the same thing, according to papers I've read. Yeah, I don't have it with me, but uh, I did run into it on the internet and in one of the books that I bought at the Tesla Society. But if you, I'll give you my website and uh, I'll dig them up for you. The website is Michael Manning. Dot Manning at gmail.com. A few minutes late, I didn't really mention anything about the Tesla car and so forth. And I think the last time I, we, you mentioned something about the electric car that uh, Tesla made, it was up in Buffalo, uh, and he didn't know too much about it, but uh, there's a lot of things written about it, and uh, supposedly there were some, they, they nailed down what the tubes were that he had used, 12 of them, evidently. Yes, so he said he was. And his explanation was that he was getting some radiation from the ether. And do you have any comment on, on what he was really looking at? There? Yeah, I really don't know because he was using 70L7 tubes, which are rectifier tubes that can only handle uh, 50, 100 milliamps a piece, maybe 200 at most. And to drive a three phase uh, 80 horse electric motor, you need hundreds of amps. So I don't know uh, how much we got. Uh, from those times of conjecture and how much was truth. So I, I can't guess at what he had. All I know is that there are reports that a uh, number of people saw him use the car and it went up to speeds of 90 miles an hour. But that's another area that should be investigated. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, was, I was going to ask, the quantum entangled uh, experiment, what did you have in mind in, term, in measuring that property? Uh, the uh, uh, slide that is shaped two Tesla coils on uh, would be a, a typical experiment in which one Tesla coil was shielded such that electromagnetic radiation couldn't escape from it, and the second coil was tuned to the same resonance as the uh, generating coil. 
And if something passed through that shield, then we'd have something to look at. Uh, have you, uh, going back to uh, uh, a skin effect that Tesla had, a feeling. I don't really understand that because I would think maybe only charged particles can produce something like that. Because even when you have a high, high radiation beam, like for treatment purposes, right. you don't feel anything, although there are a lot of interactions killing Cells, right? so I don't yeah, that's very true. But uh, uh, in ordinary electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiative treatments, you don't have any process for uh, particle, any particle um, annihilation. Which even with a really tiny particle like the neutrino, could be uh, able to release a half an electron volt or so. And of course, as you know, nerve cells will respond to 90 millivolts. So it's, it's still possible that he actually saw something there. But it's very unlikely that the neutrinos react at all, right? We have yeah. millions of them passing to us. Right. Uh, this wouldn't be a reaction with real matter. This would be a cancellation of one neutrino with an anti-neutrino, uh, creating a tiny burst of energy on the order of half an electron volt or less. Um, going back to the experiment with the two coils, yes. have you heard of, uh, I guess there's some people that speculated there's a couple experiments that actually took a bifolar, is it a bifolar coil it's called, with the two cancel field yeah, together, the bifolar coil. and they put a Faraday cage on one and over the other, and they still get a signal by like an oscillator on the other coil. Well, okay. That's the meaning by shielding, using a Faraday Yeah, that would be another yeah. version of the same experiment. Like, yeah. Now I'd like to actually do that and see it work. Uh, yes. Well, he believed that in the vacuum of space there uh, existed some form of matter that he could draw energy from. And, uh, of course, he was a believer in the uh, ether theory, uh, which he was taught in school over in uh, Serbia, I believe, and uh, which nobody really knew what ether was at the time. There's a lot of conjecture. And uh, so he still believed, though, that uh, he could build devices like the device that powered the Pierce Arrow and allowed to go to 90 miles an hour, which could extract energy directly from uh, the uh, ether. But exactly what's happening, I don't know yet. But it's still in your mind. Yeah. Under right. Your uh, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> so. So, uh, I have one last question. Yeah. It's probably not really related to Tesla that much, but um, there was a doctor called Royal Raymond Reif. Yes, his Dr. Technology. Reif. Is this related to well, some of the field effects? Dr. Reif uh, had another very interesting area of investigation in uh, his system. Uh, what he did was to uh, uh, conjecture that uh, certain uh, bacteria and certain viruses had associated with them certain natural resonant frequencies, which of course the rotating cell experiment also demonstrates. And that by uh, bombarding them with energy of those certain natural resonant frequencies, that he could cause their destruction. So he developed a very, very uh, fancy microscope in which he was able to observe the bacteria when he bombarded them with emissions from his. Uh, tuned oscillators, and he claimed he was able to pick certain resonant frequencies that killed certain types of uh, bacteria. And then he developed that into a uh, clinical program, and that ran for a while until the government shut it down. Do you have any ideas on how to detect the ether? Uh, not right off, because the neutrinos are so hard to work with. Uh, they pass through everything. They're practically invisible. And the best we've been able to do is to generate either large tanks with several thousand gallons of water or trichloroethylene, trichlor, tetrachloroethylene in them, and to look for flashes of light due to uh, uh, very few of the neutrinos interacting directly with uh, uh, 
the uh, atoms of the uh, fluid is being ca kept in a container completely separate from outside light. And it's experiments of this sort that have been used to estimate the total quantity of neutrinos that are coming out of the sun due to nuclear interactions in the sun. But if uh, physicists, as a rule, have said ether doesn't exist, right. what's your response to that? Uh, I leave the question open primarily because uh, there may be an ether, but may not be of any, uh, made of any conventional material that we're aware of, but might be made of something like the WIMP or the neutrino or a particle which is essentially invisible to us. So, so I leave that as an open question. I can't say yes, I can't say no. Did Tesla at one point say that if the, uh, or did Einstein say that if this ether existed, it would disprove his theories of relativity? And well, yeah, uh, yes, there was conflict there. Uh, he believes that if there was a, a, a modality, a, a substance that was in motion throughout the universe, that it would modulate the speed of light, and that if light uh, passed it in one direction, uh, it would uh, accelerate. If it passed it in the opposite direction, it would be decelerated. In fact, there was a device called the Michelson interferometer, which was invented to find out whether or not ether actually existed. And uh, the results of the test for the Michelson interferometer were that light propagated uh, in any direction in space at one constant velocity, uh, c. And of course, if it didn't, uh, Einstein's theories would have been in trouble. Well, okay. Well, okay. Was the Michelson um, experiment, isn't it, did it disprove the ether? Uh, essentially, it disproved any interaction between photons and an ether. It didn't absolutely disprove the existence of ether, but it did show that uh, Einstein's equations and relationships were valid for electromagnetic fields and photons, of course. Okay, that's what I have.